In this video, we're gonna break down some of the effects in Ben TK's Iceland video. So let's dive straight in. Now, if you want to see a tutorial on one of these particular effects, let me know which effect you'd like to see in the comment section below, and I'll pick the best one and turn it into a full tutorial. Now, the first one is not really an effect, but more just a really interesting camera move. And I'm talking about this particular shot here where they actually crane down and then pan around the room. Now, interestingly here, you can see that they pass the camera through this ladder and they're using just a simple gimbal to do this. And then when they bring it down behind this part of the ladder here. They're just doing a simple pass through the gap and then picking the camera up on the other side. And it just ends up being a really seamless shot all the way through and really clever use of the space. Now here they've got some little effects that are coming off the book here. And I would say that a lot of these will be just Red Giants Particular or some sort of similar program that you can create those sort of glow effects. Now this is one part that I got a lot of questions about and more specifically how they did all of this landscape here in the background. Now I would say there's only a few things going on here. The first is that they're just using some simple 3D projection, which I've done a few tutorials on this already. And by using stills, they've simply just cut these shapes out of an image or something like that. And then they're turning them into a 3D layer and positioning them in the scene. Then coupled with a 3D camera that's just moving around their scene, which they've also added some depth of field to that camera to give it that really nice blur and make it look really shallow. And with those images, all they're doing is just creating some keyframes that then they're animating on the X and Y axes to have the images sort of pop up in front of the camera. And then the other side of this is that they've created this background. Now, without creating this environment in a 3D program, there's only one other program that I know of that you can do this inside of After Effects, and that's with Red Giants Mir or Mur or however they pronounce it. And it's a program that Red Giants developed to do exactly Exactly this you create 3D terrains all inside of After Effects and it's part of their trap code particular suite or you can just buy it as a standalone program now I've personally only got limited experience using that program but I know if you want to do this sort of thing this is the program that you most likely use to do that then we have a really nice transition into this drone shot here then you can see all they've done is just masked out all those individual parts made them all 3D and then just animated them all one at a time using a series of positioned keyframes. And you can see we've got it all broken down into sections here. We've got the rock as one part, we've got this back plane here as another, and then we have our background as the final part there. Now, just before we move on, I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Then we come into our first really major transition here with this plane then flying through the air and crashing on the beach. But here you can see we've got a really nice transition into a second shot. So that we've got a really nice pan and zoom with the camera here that was added in post. Then we have a second shot here, which is our background, which could have just been simply shot on a gimbal where he's running along the edge of the beach filming the shoreline. And for the plane itself, we can see what is part of the original plane and what's been added later. So here we know that that's the original part of the plane and then these parts have been added digitally. So like the tail here, the wing tips, and then he's also animated this propeller here. Now I would say most definitely the way he's done this is to go online, find some images of a plane that match to the sort of texture of the plane that he already has in his video. He's then masked that plane out in one shot and then added all of these additional pieces as separate layers and then made them all 3D and using a 3D camera that he's tracked over his scene when in actual fact, it's just a series of 2D images that are projected onto a 3D scene. And that's just finished off with a nice dissolve here at the end as it crashes into the ground. And it's really a testament to Ben TK's creativity because the technical ability it takes to make these effects is one thing, but the creativity is really the largest part. And it's what people struggle with most when using these creative programs. So the hardest part of these videos is really coming up with the ideas or really unleashing the creativity to get the most out of it. Now we've also got another really nice shot here of this beach coming in from a bird's eye. He's animated the beach in 
from the left hand side using the bulge and distort tool along with the puppet tool and you can see where it's distorted on those images where he stretched it to animate it into frame. He's then masked out this plane and put the two shots together to create one seamless transition. Now here we have another really interesting transition of this water drop falling down into our next shot. And this is done in two separate parts. So the first part is creating a clean background. And you could do this by getting a number of stills or cutting video where it's actually moving or even adding a lot of motion blur to it and then stitching them all together to create one massive sort of track. Then over the top, we've got this water drop, which looks to be falling through our scene here and morphing shape at the same time. Now this could just be this water drop with a mask around it, and then using the puppet tool or the distortion tool, you could distort the edges of it to make it look like it's morphing or changing shape throughout the shot. Now it also looks like the water drop goes through a tunnel. Now that tunnel could have been created Created using particular with a lot of distortion effects applied and then with a color correction and then by highlighting the edges they've created this blue look as the camera is flying through the tunnel then we come across a really interesting transition here of this highlight effect in the background of the video and I'm talking about these little highlight parts here now this could just be easily done using the stroke effect animation applied over the top of the video and it's also just had a bit of blur added to it to help match the depth of field that we can see in this shot. And then with a simple feather mask over the top, we've created a reveal. Again, just a really nice little effect. The cinematic quality of his shots always really impresses me in all of his videos, and this is no exception. Now, I really love this transition here backwards through the glasses. Now, the first part of this is we've got one shot here of this guy running which is just a simple tracking shot on a gimbal. Then we have another shot here, which is a shot from behind the glasses with a bit of a zoom or a camera pullback transition. And we have this wave warp effect being applied over the top to make it look like we're going through the glasses here. Now I've already made a tutorial on exactly how to do this wave warp effect and I'll link to that in the description below. Now in particular on my video, I've dialed the effect right back, but you could always dial that right up to really exaggerate that effect like he's done here to get that wave warp effect. And he's done a really great job here of a seamless transition all the way through the glasses. Now it's not really an effect, but I want to make a point here about this drone shot in particular because it looks like there's two different speeds going on. There's one of the drone flying back that's not moving very fast. And in the background, we can see this car moving really quickly on the road. Now this difference in speed is achieved by flying your drone very, very slowly backwards and then speeding it up in the computer so that it makes you look like your drone is flying at one speed, but everything in the background is moving at a really fast pace. This is also another really clever transition here of a time lapse through the sky with someone in the foreground that transitions into this shot here. And this is two separate clips. Now you can see very clearly if I slow it down here that we've got one clip of this person or a silhouette in the foreground and he's keyed out the background in this shot by using the extract tool or using the luma curves to remove the brightest part of the image and then that's layered with a background shot which is a time lapse of the sky and the clouds moving then he's created a 3d camera over the top to give it that handheld camera movement as it pans up to the sky and pans back down again then to finish we have a really nice transition back to our 3d projection map with the book then closing down on top to finish off the video now the 3d projection of these images we've looked at in the first part of the video and all he's done is zoom the camera right through into a separate shot here of an eye and we start on the background sky shot. Then the camera pulls backwards through a simple mask here into one shot of an eye. And then we transition as the eye blinks closed into another shot here of another eye, which is then layered over a still image in the 3D projection map comp. Then all of those images are being rotated on the X axis to make them fall over as the book is closing shut. So there you go, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos like this over at flatpackeffects.com. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.